Hey friends, look, I'm so excited. I have a new resource for you. It's called Rev Up Your Dreams, and it's a guide for helping you to ignite your passion. So learn how to identify and fuel your deepest desires. It's going to help you craft your vision. It's going to help you overcome obstacles because we know as mompreneurs, there are obstacles along the journey and then some actionable steps for you to take. You may have had a child who's like, but why, right? But why you, you tell them something and they're like, but why? Maybe you were that child growing up and you just needed to get down to the root reason why just being curious. And I think we lose that simple curiosity in our mompreneur journeys. And so we have this disconnect between what our goals are and why we have them in the first place, why we became a mompreneur, why we're trying to hustle and create this life that we want for ourselves, for our families, for our community, the impact we're trying to have through our businesses. And so I want to help you connect the dots. And this guide is going to be a great resource for you. It's going to help you to rev up your dreams so that you can rev up your results. So you can grab it at martinwilliams.com forward slash guide, G-U-I-D-E. We'll make sure we put the link in the show notes for you. But again, this is a great resource to help you to rev up your dreams. And you can go to martinwilliams.com forward slash guide. Welcome to the Mompreneur Life Remix podcast, where you will learn how to remix your mompreneur life so that you can win at work without losing yourself in the process. Hi, my name is Martine Williams, and I am your host and CEO, your chief encouragement officer. And this podcast is your one-stop shop to creating a burnout-proof life and business and elevating your clarity, confidence, and courage. Friends, it's time to say goodbye to being the yes girl and hello to creating healthy boundaries, healthy mindsets, and healthy habits. Your next breakthrough starts here. This is the Mompreneur Life Remix Podcast. Let's do this. Your motive is your motor. So I want you to ask yourself, what are your motives for growing a successful business? What are your motives for hitting your specific health and fitness goals? What are your motives around the things that you're trying to accomplish? Those are the things we're going to be talking about today in today's episode. The quality of your answers and results comes from the quality of questions that you ask. So before we dive into the content for today's podcast, I just want to say happy April. I am so excited that we are in the second quarter. And I know this is usually the time where maybe you might be feeling a little discouraged. Maybe you have set goals for you know Q1 and maybe you're a little bit behind. Maybe you're blown past them already and you're finding you need a little bit more depth on what your, your motives are, or you, it's just a good time for us to pause and reflect and make the necessary adjustments that we need to make and do not allow ourselves to fall into the all or nothing mentality. Like I tried that for three months. It didn't work. So it's never going to work. Or I tried this, or, you know, this was the goal that I set. I missed it for, you know, Q1. And so I'm just going to throw it out. It's so easy for us to fall into all nothing mentality where either everything is working or nothing really is. And the truth of it is some things are working, some things aren't working and some things just need to be tweaked a little bit. And so throughout my conversations with my coaching clients, probably over the last, I would say month or so, the same topic has come up for discussion. It's come up about really understanding their reasons, understanding their motive, or uh, maybe they're, they're leading a team. And, you know, a lot of times we, we kind of go straight to the skill, right? Straight to the action, straight to the behavior that we want to see happen or that we want to change. And we don't take time to really think through number one, what are our thoughts about those goals? What are our thoughts about ourselves? What are the things that you're thinking right now? What are you making it mean about you that you haven't hit your goal? Or maybe that you've blown past your goal. What are you making those things mean about you? So we really want to get in the habit of checking 
our thoughts, right? You've heard me say the three C's before, but I'll remind you again here today because I know some of you might be listening and you're you're in that discouragement state of mind. And so you have to really catch the thought, right? What are the thoughts? What are the things that you're saying to yourself? Even right now, in the very beginning of this podcast, you're listening. Oh, here she goes. She's going to be talking about motive, talking about her why, helping me discover my why. And you probably have thoughts about that. Maybe you've gone through um, and asked yourself some of these questions before. It may not be new to you, but we can have a lot of knowledge, but are you implementing? Are you constantly being curious about yourself? Are you curious about your thoughts? that are producing your results because that really is what it boils down to. So catch the thought, then check it, right? Check it. Is it factual? Is it a feeling? Is it producing feelings that are not helping you to move forward in your business or in your fitness goals or in your relationship goals? Because we're all about mompreneur life here that, that encompasses lots of different things, not just your business goals. And then If it's not helping you get closer to where you want to be, then we have to change it. And this takes time. It takes intentionality for you to pause and reflect and evaluate. And so as you're doing that process right now, one of the things I want you to really think about is your motive, because your motive is your motor. It really, really is. And instead of asking yourself, like, is this business going to grow? Like that produces, when I hear that question, and when I, I've said that question before, that produces doubt. And when I'm feeling doubt, my actions that follow are probably not the right actions to get the result that I'm looking for, right? So instead of asking, is this business going to grow? Is this weight going to come off? Is this relationship going to last? Ask, how will I make this business grow? How will I grow this business? How will I get this weight off? How will I get healthier in my relationships? Because your emotion that's attached to that question is going to produce a different feeling and actions and then a different result. And again, this has been coming up a lot with my one-on-one clients. And so when I start to see these things coming up like consistently, then I do feel like, okay, this is probably a topic I could talk about on the podcast to help you and to help you to understand what your motives are. Because The interesting thing is when you ask someone and maybe you've asked yourself or you're like, what is your why or someone has asked you, you probably gave them a very surface answer. And one of my clients recently, we were walking through this as she was preparing for, she's opening up a coaching practice and she's a health coach and she was putting together a workshop um, for some moms. And, you know, I just simply asked her like, why are you doing this? And the reason I was asking her the question is because I could sense some fear, right? I could sense some uncomfortableness, maybe some doubts, like some of those emotions. So I kind of wanted to know what she was thinking. And I also wanted to know like, what's her real reason why, uh, behind her business as a whole. And, um, because look, when you're starting a business or you walk into the gym for the first time, or you have that really first hard conversation with someone you're in a relationship with, those feelings are going to come up. Those emotions are going to come up. And so we want to have a really purposeful, compelling reason, a motive, why we're going to be doing those things so that we can help push through the uncomfortableness a little bit easier. Still going to be maybe nerves. You're still going to feel nervous. You're still going to have maybe some of the emotions, but at least we can keep them at check. Like I was telling her, like fear is going to be there probably. Uncomfortableness is going to be there probably, but it doesn't have to be in the driver's seat, right? It can be buckled in safely in the passenger seat, or you can just put that bad boy in the back seat, right? Like I see you fear. I see you doubt. I see you, you know, procrastination or whatever, and you're there, you're going to ride along, but you're not going to drive me. You're not going to be the motor that drives me forward. So I think we try to resist and push those things down. This is what I was sensing. And so I was talking to her about it and I said, so why are you wanting to do this? And she said, because I want to help busy moms. And I paused and I said, why? You know, there's always another question to ask yourself. Don't take your own surface level answer. And, you know, she kind of paused for a second and she started thinking through it. And then she said, well, I know what it's like to grow up in a home. uh, And I'm totally paraphrasing this, but um, I know what it's like to grow up in a home where the mom didn't take good care of herself. She didn't have self-care. and so." She was always stressed and always creating these trauma moments. 
in our family. And so that, that impacted me. And she started crying and she said, that's what I see. I don't want to have other moms do. There's a better way. And I, and I don't want to see trauma get passed down and passed down and passed down. And I said, so you want to help break generational trauma by helping moms make themselves a priority. And it was like, we hit the gold, right? Like that's where you have to get to on your motive to keep going, whether it's in business or relationships or your fitness goals, because times get tough. You hear no in the business. No, I'm not interested. Or you hear, I don't want to have that conversation right now. Or, you know, you have to say something difficult or, you know, you're sore and you don't want to go back to the gym. Those things are coming. Every one of us has experienced them. But when you know the deep reason why, and so she went forward, like I asked her, I told her afterwards, I really encourage you, like in this moment, when we get off the call to journal some more and keep asking yourself the question. She came up with so many great motives and reasons why she was doing the things that she was doing. And so she had her workshop and she messaged me afterwards with like the best, just, you know, as a coach, I, it just is so amazing to hear a student making progress. And she was like, it's, you know, it was hard to get people to be on the workshop. It was hard to send out the reminders and figure out all the things, you know, technology and how she was going to do all the invites, but it was so worth it. Like I killed that workshop. Like I nailed it. Like it was so good. Like she was just so confident. And I don't know that she would have felt the same way if she hadn't gotten to the main reason why she was doing this in the first place. So I just really wanted to come out here and share that with you because I do think sometimes we just, we either say the reasons why we do things because maybe it's politically correct, or maybe it's because that's what, you know, someone has told us it should be the reason why, instead of like trusting ourselves to come up with those answers and taking the time to slow down, to figure it out. So what is your motive? Or again, you may hear people say uh, what their why is. I think we kind of use that over and over again a little bit too much. This is why I I say, you know, you've got to master your motive. So most of us answer the what, but not the why. The what for her was, I want to help busy moms. But the why was so much deeper. Another example that I'll give you is um, a consultant. When I was with 31, one of my team members came to me and, and she had far exceeded the goals that she had set out to um, achieve, honestly, in her business. And she was like, I just, I feel like I don't have the motivation anymore. Like I need something, right? I need a new why. And so we talked through a little bit and, you know, I kind of coached her and she came back and she said, okay, I haven't, I haven't, I know what my new why is. And I said, great, what is it? And she said, I want to provide braces for my husband. And I'm like, okay, my next question is always going to be, but why? And I said, cause that's the what, what's the why? And she said, um, well, he has to get up and speak pretty consistently. He's a pastor and, you know, growing up, he didn't have the, his family didn't have the money for dental care. And so he's pretty embarrassed when he gets up there. He doesn't want to smile. He doesn't want to show his teeth. And I said, so what you, the reason why you want to provide braces, you actually want to provide confidence for your husband. And again, her eyes teared up, my eyes teared up because it's just a different, it's a more deep emotional reason behind the why. And you've got to get there, y'all. You have to get to that place. Another example was uh, another leader uh, on my team shared her story and, you know, of just being able to provide a warm home for her kids. Like she was in a financial situation where, you know, she was worried about her car being repossessed. She was worried about whether her kids were going to be able to sleep in a warm home, like to keep the heat on. Right. So it would have been so easy for her to say, and it was initially, I just want to make a thousand extra dollars a month. Okay. But why? And that's when she shared the more details. Right. And I don't think until you say it and you speak it maybe to someone else or you write it out on a piece of paper, I don't think you realize how important getting to those examples that I just gave you really, really is. And so I I challenge you after we're done today, I'm going to give you some questions and I challenge you to, to stop what you're doing and actually spend time here, get a journal out, get a piece of paper out, and then share it with someone else because they have may have more questions that might help you get even deeper and deeper into your why. So why do we want to do this? 
Number one, knowing your motive creates focus, energy, and passion, and it acts like a compass to keep you on track. It creates perspective and perseverance when your goals kind of seem too far away or they seem too big. I can promise you that, you know, I never dreamed of some of the things that I've accomplished um, here in my businesses, but it was my why and my motive still today that the motor is the motor that keeps me showing up and doing the right things and achieving one goal at a time. And I did a training for a couple of teams this year on mastering the five key elements to achieving success. And one of them is mastering your motive. Like it is so important. I could give you all the skill sets in the world, all the tactical sticky things, you know, the list of things to do. But if you don't know why you should be doing them or why you want to do them, because you don't know what your real reason uh, why is, you've heard me say reasons equals results, then you're probably not going to do them. And, it, and if you're a leader that's listening to this and you lead um, a team of any kind and you haven't gotten your team members to tap into what their motives are, then you can throw all the skill sets at them too. They're not going to follow it. You can give them all the systems and they may do it for a little while, but they're eventually going to lose that excitement around the new thing. And you have to get them emotionally tapped into their own. Hey friend, can I give you permission today? Like for real, your own permission slip. Permission to get clear, to cut out the noise, mostly the noise that is going on around in your own mind, in your own head. It's just swirling. And you're asking yourself questions like, why am I stuck? Why am I frustrated? Why am I not making progress on my goals? I want to invite you to a free clarity call with me where we're going to dive in and we're going to identify what are the three main issues that are keeping you stuck? Number two, what are the mindsets around those issues that are actually keeping you from solving for those issues? It's not our skill sets. It's our mindsets that keep us stuck and hold us back. And then number three, identifying what are your next steps? We all have a next step and we have hundred percent responsibility for those next steps. Your only next step right now is to go to the show notes and book your free clarity call so that we can work through this. I'm believing in you and I cannot wait to see you on our clarity call. Another thing that I want to share with you here is to have a decided heart. You've heard me talk about the Traveler's Gift books, one of my favorite books by Andy Andrews, and he talks about having a decided heart. So you don't want to be a fence sitter. It's painful. It's uncomfortable to straddle the fence. And when you're straddling the fence, like, like, should I try and go to this gym or should I try this exercise or should I have this conversation or, you know, you just start shooting all over yourself. And you've heard me say this before, but it really does steal the joy because you're in that land of indecision. And I see this a lot where you're straddling the fence and you're so afraid to make the wrong decision that you make no decision. And so indecision is still a decision. When you're sitting on a fence, you are deciding to sit there. You're deciding I'm not making a decision because A, either I don't feel like I have enough information to make the decision or B, it's going to be uncomfortable. I can guarantee you it's more uncomfortable to sit on that fence than it is to take your next step, whatever it is. And I'm not saying make informed or uninformed decisions, but I am saying have a decided heart. We need to stop spending so much time trying to make the right decision and instead pull the trigger and make the decision and then do the work that makes it right. So when you're on the fence, it creates that stalling, like you're you're stalling on your business goals, you're stalling on your fitness goals, you're stalling and improving that relationship and really a lack of focus. So when you are shooting all over the place, again, should I keep going? Should I try this? Then you really just swing your commitment in the opposite direction of your goals. And you spend so much time on making that decision. One of my uh, coaches said to me last year, she's like, if you have to coach yourself, on this decision, you're not helping anyone and you're not making any money. So you just need to decide and move forward, decide, take a step, get to work on making it the right decision. And that was really profound for me because I was spending a lot of time in this one area. And honestly, it was on like, how do I price my programs and how do I price my coaching? And, you know, I've had people tell me it should be this and it should be that. And she was like, you have spent so much time and mind drama around the pricing that you're not helping anybody and you're not making any money. And I was like, that's what I needed to hear, right? Because I want to help people and I do want to make money also, but I really don't want to hold myself back from helping someone because that's a really deep reason why I do the business that I, why I do the coaching that I do. I want to help 
mompreneurs get unstuck. I want to help them to take their next step. I want to help them to not burn out on the way to success because that's not fun, right? I want to help them to see how uniquely amazing they are gifted to do the business their way and to trust and to show up in that confident energy versus that proving energy that you've heard me talk about before. So if you're on the fence and you're not making a decision about anything, then, and y'all know this, we just get busy. Like we're not in business, but we just get busy. Shuffling papers, checking emails, reorganizing our desk, reorganizing our files, getting on social. Like it's just this fake sense of success and productivity. And that doesn't feel good either because when you get to the end of the day and you're like, why, what did I even do today? Right. And so instead of being on the fence, actively engage the motor and the motive in your business. Shift from saying, should I, to how will I? But your motives, they do, they can, they do change. So you want to revisit them you know, consistently um, and decide what your, your motives are. Have conversations with people around that because that commitment to the reasons why creates freedom because you no longer have to think and decide. You've committed this is what I want. I'm going to go after it. And so you're committed. The decision is made. It's done, right? Like as soon as she said that to me, the decision was made. I'm never going to have this drama around this. I'm just going to move forward. This is the price. I'm going to move forward. And you no longer have to be kind of in that limbo land that I hear and see so many of my clients get stuck in. Without clear motives, it's easy to become confused on which business choices, health choices, best serve you, you start looking at everyone else. Simply put, you will make better choices on how you spend your time, energy, and resources, and will build a business that makes you feel fulfilled instead of depleted. Because when you don't have a clear motive and you have a clear reason why, and also side note, if you don't have clarity around what your strengths are, then it's so easy to look at what everyone else is doing and think, well, their way is the way right? Or that looks like something I should do over there. But if it's not part of your strengths and it's also not uh, attached to and aligned with why you want what you want, it might be good for them, but it's probably not going to be good for you. And we need to learn how to create that clarity by, again, starting with the motive, knowing what your motives are. So I want you to really dig deep and ask yourself questions When asked, again, very few people give their strongest reasons for why they're in the business or why they're going to the gym or why they're cold plunging. I mean, you could really fill in the blank with any of this stuff. Whatever you have on your list of your goals that you maybe set at the beginning of the year, and maybe you're feeling a little down about them. Maybe you do need to adjust your goals. Maybe you need to change some things and that's okay. But always come back to why. What is the motive? That is going to be your motor that helps you when those obstacles come. You got to get to the heart of it. So I wanted to share with you just some examples of what another, like just a statement that you that could be coming from your your why or your motive. So I've had people say, like, once we kind of did some of this coaching, I want my husband to be proud of me. I don't believe he has ever truly been proud of who I am. Right? That's you feel the emotion in that statement. Another one could be, I want to show my parents that I can make something of myself and be successful that you can feel the emotion in that one. I want to prove to myself, this is a big one that comes up a lot in my coaching and my cl- uh, on my clarity calls with my potential clients. I want to prove to myself that I can accomplish what I set out to do. Those are real reasons why to do the things that we all know are going to be uncomfortable or could be uncomfortable in building a business and building your health goal or health and wellness goals and building relationships We have to get to the heart of it. So I wanted to give you uh, some examples of these questions, and I will put a link in the show notes for you for this free resource. So don't feel like you have to like write all this down, but I just want you to sit with these questions as I read these out and think through them. And if you have to pause this episode while you're listening and write it down and just go through it, do it. So the first one is what initially inspired me to start my own business? Like reflect on the origins, right? Like the original reasons why you started your entrepreneurial journey and uncover like underlying motivations some passions, but what initially inspired you to, it may not be 
what you're inspired by right now, but it's okay to go back, right? Like what initially inspired me to become an entrepreneur was I had a husband, I still have a husband who loves to do, he's independent. He has hobbies. Y'all heard me told this, uh, share this story before, has lots of friends locally. And I initially just needed a way to get out of mom role and to connect with other women and to build some connections that way and have something just for myself because a lot of my friends did not move back here. So that was the initial reason why I joined and started, you know, being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, but now it's, and it's morphed and changed. It's been 17 years since I took that first step and it's changed and it's good to revisit this, but I think it's fun to go back and think of what initially um, inspired you. And if you just got started, then there you go. What aspects of being a mompreneur, most of your mompreneurs are listening, bring the most joy and fulfillment to you. What aspects of it? Like identify like specific moments or tasks that you find most rewarding. Um, those can really provide insight into your deep, deeper values and priorities. So what aspects of being a mompreneur bring you the most joy and fulfillment? What impact, this is a big one, what impact do I hope to make through my business? both personally and within my community, or maybe you're in a specific industry. And again, you can fill in the blank here. These are all going to be about business. You can fill in the blank with your fitness goals, your health goals, your relationship goals, financial goals. Like you can fill in the blank here with, with most of these questions. They can be pretty generic. But what impact do you hope to make through your business, both personally and within your community or industry? Industry, Like really consider like the broader purpose, kind of like when I was doing that with my client the other day, like the broader purpose is breaking generational trauma, right? The mission behind why she's holding workshops and doing the entrepreneurial things is to help reach those women. And really think about like, how do you envision making a difference in the lives of others? And the lives of others could be the people right there in your home. What is the impact of you reaching your goals on your family and those right there around you? Another question could be, what values do I want my business to embody? Why are these values important to me? This really helps you to, you know, thrive and drive your business decisions with your underlying beliefs and principles. That helps kind of shape your purpose and keep your purpose at the forefront, but really understanding what your values are and the ones that are going to drive your business decisions, right? Like integrity is really important to me. Respect is really important to me. And so I always want to be from a place uh, and authenticity is also. So that's one of my core values is I want to show up as authentic as possible when I'm coaching, when I'm speaking here on the podcast, when I'm speaking on stage, when I'm, you know, holding a workshop, I want people to see me as me, right? That's why I think I I share so much with y'all and maybe, maybe more than some than others would, because I want you to hear the successes, but I also want you to hear when things aren't going great, right? And things aren't like all rainbows and sunshine. So I share everything with you because that's one of my core values. Another uh, question you could ask is, when faced with challenges or setbacks, what keeps me motivated to persevere? Like what is the source of resilience and determination? For me, it is going back to the root question of why am I in this business or why am I going to the gym? Also, I'm a woman of faith. So my sources of resilience is being in God's word and praying, being around people who have those same values. It has to have meaning for you. So there's some other questions. I'm not going to read through all of them because I'm going to, I'll add those again in the, uh, the show notes for you, but you know, how will you achieve, how will you achieve, how will you feel when you achieve this, this goal, how will your children feel about you as they watch you because they're watching, right? you achieve this goal. What will be in place? Like just really allow your brain to just dream without limits when you're thinking about your why and what could be possible. Like don't think out your why and dream about things that you feel like are impossible for you or could never happen. Just allow your brain some space to just dream. You know, maybe it is, maybe there was some in your past that didn't feel that you could be successful who you would like to perceive as successful. Maybe that's part of your your motive and your why is you want to prove to other people, right? Prove to yourself and prove to other people that you can be successful. So lots of things for you to get a journal out, a pen and paper and write through this. If you're not a journal, that's okay. You can just use a notebook, piece of paper. You can 
use your notes in your phone, whatever. I'm a huge believer of pen and paper when it comes to stuff like this, but I hope that this will help you to help you define what your, your motive is and to revisit some of this as we head into the second quarter and help you either get back on track, right? Maybe life has happened. Maybe something has happened that kind of derailed you over the last couple of months, or maybe just last week. Don't give up on yourself because you probably started with a really compelling reason in January and maybe things have gotten hard or your thoughts, your brain is offering up all kinds of crazy things that you're believing. So again, that's why I said in the very beginning, we want to check our mindset, check your thoughts, catch them, check them and change them if you need to. Um, But then spend some time here on creating your motive. And then again, share it with someone, share it with your spouse, share it with your kids, share it with, if you have an accountability partner, if you have a coach, if you don't, I'm here for you. It's important that you share it with someone else because that helps reconfirm. These are the reasons why that helps to really set it into motion as well. When you talk to someone else about this. So, all right, that's what I have for you today. Um, We have some amazing turquoise talk guests this month, uh, this month lined up for you. And, um, as always, if you want help with this process and you really want someone who can just not be in your story, but help you to see your story and help you to write this out. Um, this is part of the work that I do with my coaching clients. I offer free clarity calls. This is really helpful because you and I get together on a call for about an hour and we just kind of talk through like, where are you, right? That's the first key is awareness. The second one is like, where do you want to go? And then the third one is what's your next step, right? And for some people, the next step is it's time to invest. It's time to invest in a coach. Um, And for others, it's like, no, I got really good clarity from this call. I've got some really good things to run with and I'm going to run with it. So the call is for you and it's my goal to help you by the end of the call to make your best decision. What is your next step? So highly, highly recommend it. It's completely free. Podcasts are completely free too. So these are two great resources for you to take action. And a lot of times what I hear uh, my mompreneur and my coaching client say is I have the knowledge, I have the information, but I'm still not taking action. I'm still not taking action. And so if that's you, I highly recommend that you get on a call because there's something missing and it could be coaching. It could be a thought that's in the way, but it's time to get activated into achieving and creating and designing the life and the business that you want and not by default, not by other people's expectations or what other people are doing, but really coming from that confident place and creating the life and the business through your strengths, through your goals and through your motive. So that's it for you today. I will be catching you on our next episode. And I hope that you enjoy all the turquoise talk guests this month. Well, that's a wrap friends. Thank you for tuning into today's episode. I really hope it met you right where you are and gave you some encouragement for your day. Could you do me the biggest favor and leave me a rating and review? Seriously, it's the best way for you to support the show. And while you're there, be sure to follow the show so you never miss an episode. Thanks again. And until next time, I am believing in you always.